Hey everybody, welcome back for another edition of the Club Cool Podcast. I am your host, Vera Dudley, and I am here where we always are at the intersection of style and pop culture, which today resides in the Washed Media Studios. We are brought to you by Washed Media. Joining me, it's Phil Battaglia. What's good, Phil? Hey, man. How's it going? Going well. Yeah, nice little Wednesday, February 3rd. Got the Super Bowl this weekend. Who you got? Um, Well, the sharp money's on the bucks. That's what everybody's saying. Really? Yes. What's the spread? Do we know? Yeah, the Ch- it's Chiefs by three, and everybody's kind of like looking back at like the like the uh, Chiefs looked great against the Bills. They uh, scored a lot of points, but if you go back games prior to that, they've been inconsistent. Mahomes, he just had he had that concussion. All it's going to take is like one hard hit, and maybe he's kind of out concussed or out of it a little bit. You know, Sue. This is Tom Brady. This is Tom Brady. We're talking about here. I was so sick of that. Like I don't know. You know, it just it's it's. that's the thing. It, this is classic gambling. Everybody's on the Chiefs. Like the Chiefs are are on paper very clearly like the Chiefs should win. This is the more dominant team. And that means that like if the public's too heavy on one team, the Sharps always see the opportunity. The Sharps. The Sharps. That's the the, the professional smart money. Smart money. Yeah. Well, I don't care. I just want to see a good game. You got any Super Bowl plans? No. No. You going to watch at home? Probably. Yeah. That's uh that, that's our plan. Um, no no get-togethers, no gatherings. It's it's a sad time, of course, but mu- much in the way that I got to host Thanksgiving for the first time. Yeah, I, I have not watched uh, the Super Bowl just in my own abode right. on my own time with my own food and beverage. I don't know in twenty years, something crazy <laughs> like that, right? You likely have never even heard the half like the full halftime show in years. Yeah, I mean, last year, like we were at we were we were at Dave's, and like we got a good watch of the halftime show. But you're talking, but, but yeah, yeah, we're but, talking, yeah. and I don't, I, sh- I sure as shit don't remember what happened in the game. Yeah, you know, what I mean? right? <laughs> you don't remember any big plays? No, no, no. So, so I am, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to that. I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna do Taco Bar, like Crunchy Taco Bar. Yeah, good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, love that. I think that's like it's like it, it's it's. It's more a fuller meal than just like making a plate of nachos. I get more enjoyment out of it. Yeah, you can elevate it, kick it up. You a can, notch I too. can kick it up a notch like emerald. Yeah, and then I'm thinking maybe a. Uh, I'm thinking a. There's this tiramisu cake that I really I'd like to try my hand at. You're gonna make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you did the turkey and Thanksgiving. I'm, I'm thinking I did the turkey wrong. So, <laughs> but I've, I'm more comfortable. Look, when it doesn't in, involve a 15 pound frozen bird, I'm 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 You're feeling okay. I'm feeling more confident. Mm. But I might just go all out. I might, I might just you tiramisu know? doesn't seem mm. easy to me. So it's a tiramisu cake, though. Tiramisu not easy. You put those flavors into a cake, and it gets a little easier. Okay. You don't have to deal with the lady fingers, all the little floofy stuff that makes tiramisu so delicious. That's what scares me is the layering. Yeah. This yeah. isn't. This is this is no no okay. layering. Good. You're making a cake. You're making a glaze. You let the glaze soak, and then you get a little. Little whipped topping, a little whipped frosting Ooh, on there. Love that. So, so we'll bring me a slice. Uh, yeah, I'll just I'll run it up. I'll run it up the street for you. Uh, <laughs> drop off a goodie bag for you. Um, let's talk about last week real quick. We actually did get in the stewed and record last week, but I was I was ill prepared, my friends. It was um, I. I, I w- it was a, it was a, it was bad. I did not have a rundown. I thought we were going to be able to wing it. We have been able to do that in the past. But I, I don't want to bring you guys bad product, I, I, and I just didn't feel confident in this podcast, especially because we were praised for a couple of recent episodes. Oh, like oh, I really liked that one; that was good. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to suddenly, you know, give everybody a supreme letdown. And so we've got, we, we've got some clips that are just hanging out in the vault now. The under, those are for underground. They're, they're the, yeah, yeah. It's the, an underground episode. It's a, yeah, it's the, uh, the, the, the lost tapes, yeah. as it were. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I don't know when that stuff will surface. Um, but when it does, you won't like it. <laughs> I can assure you. <laughs> well, I mean, if I just, it's, it's really, it's not that our conversation was bad. It's that it was just kind of like spliced together. <laughs> a lot of long pauses. A lot of, uh, you know, in, in just in tight format, it could be good. Um, you got to get on the editing stick. That, that, that's right. That's right. And and last week, it was a very busy week. Not only um, did I have regular work stuff and trying to get ready for for multiple podcasts, but I was doing I was doing mad yard work, Phil. Yeah, you were. 
I was putting together a paver patio. In fact, I took last Tuesday off to get the majority of this work done, which sapped up all my all my Club Cool podcast prep time, basically, because I was I you know I was working I worked ten to seven more or less uh, on this on this outdoor patio. That's finally finished now. I've put that project to bed. Feels good, but I do want to talk about a little bit about this project because it got me thinking about about yard work and and yard clothes. Uh, so that that's going to be a topic today. And um, then I want to recap. You and I got were able to get together with uh, with some friends at an outdoor brewery this Sunday, and we had a really good conversation about the shopping experience, the in person shopping experience. And so I want to touch on that a little bit. And then um, we are going to rehash a topic that we uh, that we covered last week that you'll never hear. It's the the new John Elliott Made in Italy shoe program. Mm-hmm. All of the silhouettes have now been released, so we can see them. We can discuss them in full, and they will they will all have dropped by the end of this week. At least one colorway and in, in all three styles. Um, before we jump into any of that, though, I did let's go back to the Super Bowl real quick because the weekend is performing at the halftime show. And I am very, very excited for Me this. Me too, man. Um, I have uh, basically since since he released the most recent music video where all the bandages are removed and he's got the really crazy like prosthetics in and mm-hmm. like very, he's got heavy plastic surgery botch job face. Mm-hmm. I started re-listening to the album, and my God, that is a good album. It is from it's front to back, no skips. Yeah. I love the whole. I, I listen to it, and the whole thing feels very much like a. Like it could be the score to Stranger Things, mm-hmm. and at the same time could also like be the score to like one of the Halloween Mike Myers movies. It's you good. know, it's got this like kind of horror synth element to yeah. to it, um, and I just think it is a totally complete album. I love what he has done with the videos. I love the, uh, I love the the performance art aspect that he is doing with the the bandages on the face and the award show and the and how this has been one like you know story told all the way. You remember when this album was released, you know, or when the first singles were released? No, end of two thousand nineteen. Because he he did the big hit at another like award show on the top of that roof. Do you remember that performance? It was just him yes. solo. Yeah, no yeah. audience. Yeah, that's right. And that was great. Yeah, but Heartless came out. That was at the end of two thousand nineteen because we talked about the red. <sighs> The red tuxedo jacket, the red dinner jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For like a New Year's Eve get up. <laughs> simpler times, simpler mm. times. Um, but you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty bullish on uh, on this vaccine thing now. You are. Yeah, I think, I think the wheels are in motion. Man, we really changed topics there, didn't we? Well, I'm just saying, like, like. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get back to the Pepsi halftime show. <laughs> By just, the way, is it still Pepsi? Is Pepsi I, still sponsoring? I think so. How yeah. is that? <laughs> who drinks Pepsi? Randy, you drink Pepsi. I, okay, who eats Burger King? Right. There, there are they exist, yeah. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> but Pepsi. Yeah, people drink Pepsi. I, I, but that being said, I'm a PepsiCo shareholder. You own stock in Pepsi. Long time. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's a great, great company. They don't. They own way more than just Pepsi. No GameStop, but you're all in on Pepsi. PepsiCo, <laughs> PepsiCo, not just Pepsi. <laughs> what else does uh, what is Pe- oh Pepsi owns the fast some fast food joints, right? Uh, they own, don't they own Taco Bell? They probably. I could. think Pe- yeah, that and- might be Yum Brands, or is that KFC? KFC owns Taco Bell for sure. Anyway, I like a, a Pepsi. When's the last time you had one? Oh, there's no telling. There's absolutely no telling. Oh yeah, they own Lay's. Okay. Cheetos. Ah, little known brand Gatorade. <laughs> PepsiCo. How about that? I believe so, yeah. I thought Coca Cola owned Gatorade. Twenty two PepsiCo brands, blah, blah, blah. Who owns Powerade? Mountain Dew. Gatorade. They have they have Gatorade, Tropicana, Seven Up. You know I had a pa- uh, so another speaking- brand you might have heard of, Doritos. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think we have a Matthew McConaughey Doritos commercial to look forward to in the yeah. Super Bowl as well. Um I actually I, I like this this yard program, this yard project that I had going, uh-huh. I'm lifting fifty pound pavers by the dozens on the daily. This was this was this was hard labor, my friend. And You're drinking some Gatorade. I, yeah, I bought a. Well, I was I was at I was in the garden center at Home Depot. I had you know fourteen fifty pound pavers and like a bunch of PVC PEX pipe, and you know I'm wearing my gloves. I'm just feeling good, and I look over at the cooler. And sitting there is a an icy cold blue Powerade, and I said, 
I deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at how much sugar is in that. Well, when you're sweating your ass off and you're working hard, yeah, yeah, yeah. you need that. You do. You got to restore the. You got to replenish the electrolytes. Sure. In a in a icy mountain blue Powerade. It was good too, wasn't it? It was great. It was great. But you got to earn it. Yeah. Um. Just to close the loop here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I, I, the vaccine, because hopefully, you know, this New Year's, you will be able to to don to don a sick kit, a la the weekend and all of his music videos, mm-hmm. and you know, get together with your with your peeps again. Yeah, and not have to worry about screaming in their face and and poisoning them with a with a potentially You're this deadly virus. New Year's. Oh, absolutely. You're absolutely okay. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like I think that. the I think the holidays. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be close to to normal. Well, we just talked about before we got on air that the weekend they're already selling tickets to his show here in Austin for yeah. April 2022. 2022. By then, oh yeah, right around um, the corner. That's it's all. It's a year away. Who can you know? Yeah, you know, And let it. me tell you what, I'm tempted to buy the tickets. I just want to buy tickets to, to, su- to something. have something that something. will truly put a light at the end of the tunnel. Right. Yeah, abs- Yeah, I'm with you. When do they go on sale? I don't know. They're I got. Giving, they're I got, giving them away right now. I got to see the weekend. Got to. I'm very, like I said, I'm very, very excited about this halftime show. What we were also talking just before we started the podcast, though, is will he, in this setting where he kind of has to appeal to all of America, you know? Now we've had people, we've had Beyonce, we've had Lady Gaga. They've been allowed to even J Lo last year. You know, did some pretty. Like they didn't have to keep it too too PG, right? Like, yeah. She got to dance on the pole, and Beyonce got to do the formation thing, and mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, and Lady, Lady Gaga, you know, she jumped off the roof in uh, in Houston. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I don't know. They they were they were allowed to pull some stunts, but again, he can't. He probably can't go super dark with it. Right. But right. I am curious. I I would like to see him. I don't even if he doesn't do like full prosthetics, maybe he can start with the bandages on and then rip the bandages off or something. I don't know. I'd like to see something. Who 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 would be your ideal like surprise guest for the weekend show? Man, that's that's tough, dude. Come back to me on that. Paul McCartney. That, that I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say that didn't really work. <laughs> um, Michael Jackson. Mm, mm-hmm. A hologram. A hologram Michael Jackson? No, not not probably cost too much. <laughs> uh, I don't you know. Gotta, Let me got to pay that. the estate. Okay, we'll come back to it. Um, okay, let's. Uh, I want to jump into this yard work conversation. I don't even know if it's an interesting conversation, but I've been sure I've been, it is. I've been steaming on it. <laughs> um, but first, let's take a quick break and hear from this week's sponsor. The curators at Bespoke Post have done it again this winter with an all-new lineup of essential Box of Awesome collections for guys guaranteed to upgrade your life. I love everything I've ever gotten from Box of Awesome. These guys don't miss. I'm talking great sunglasses. I'm talking a sweet sunglasses case. I'm talking cocktails. I'm talking cocktail recipes and awesome cups. And I mean, it, it, it doesn't end there. Whether it's to showcase pieces to, to level up your indoor hosting skills or cozy threads for those uh, those blustery winter days. Bespoke Posts only sends guys the best stuff every month. So no matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. Let's take a look at some of these, Phil, because there are some uh, some pretty schmancy ones going on here right now. I mentioned cocktails. How about the smoked box? Golly, that's intense. You get a whole ass mixology thing here with the little the little hickory chips in a Bunsen burner, like a torch lighter and a little, you that's know, a science great. it's a science experiment thing here. You're going to upgrade your old fashions and your Manhattans to a level that you didn't even know was possible because you're going to be smoking them. You're going to do a little smoke thing with them. You got to check this out. Who needs a cocktail bar? Nobody. This this right is right there in your house. This is uh, until we can get back to the, you know, to the bars. This feels like a must-have. There's also the filet box, which, honestly, if we're being practical here, this might be the most necessary one available right now. You can always stand to have really, really good, sharp kitchen knives. Yes. As a as somebody, I, we're both in the kitchen all the time, whipping up, whipping up the goods. <laughs> so I'm, um, you know, the importance of a of a good sharp knife. Um, there's great stuff for there's again there's threads for lounging around on the weekend. Um, there's a shoe shine kit. There's there's more cocktail stuff. 
it's all good. There's a big weekend bag. Uh, like I said, that these guys don't miss, and you can't go wrong with any of these box these boxes. So, to get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. They release new boxes every single month across a ton of different categories, and it's free to sign up. Plus, you can skip a month or cancel any time that you want to. Each box costs only $45, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. I can definitely vouch for that. These things come with, you get you definitely get your money's worth for that $45. Plus, you can get 20% off of your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code CLUBCOOL at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code CLUBCOOL for 20% off your first box. Treat yourself. We all need a little something, a little self-care for ourselves in these trying, uncertain times. And so until they're over, you know, you you, you got to you gotta look after yourself. And um, and even once they are over, you're just going to love this stuff, so you're going to keep it. Boxofawesome.com. Enter that code CLUBCOOL at checkout for 20% off of your first box. Okay, Phil. Um, so here's what I here's what I got to thinking about over the last few weeks is I've been uh, knocking out this this yard project. I'm doing more of this than ever what? in the pandemic. Yard stuff. Yard stuff. Projects around the house. Yes. Painting. Yes. Door stuff. Hauling. I'm at the garden center at Home Depot. This is and this is where the garden center at Home Depot is where I where I you know made my first mistake many months ago. I was uh, I was doing uh, I was actually it was another paver uh, jo- another paving job, but it was for the little trash section where mm-hmm. you put your trash cans. You needed some paver base, paver sand, bunch of pavers. We were running some other errands that day, so I was you know I had on like I had on cool shoes. I put on shoes Ooh. that I liked, and then I'm looking like an asshat in the garden center, tiptoeing around the puddles, <laughs> trying not to get soil on them, and then like you you know you're manhandling like a big metal. A, a metal tr- hand truck, yeah, throwing bags of of paver base all over the place. Yeah, you can't be doing that. You're not being you, taken you, seriously there. No, absolutely not. You look you look like a fool. You're going to ruin your shoes. This is not the right thing. So that's when I learned when you go to Home Depot, you better come correct. <laughs> Have your gloves on you because you never know when you're going to need to pick up something heavy or move mm-hmm. a two by four, what have you. Anything dust can get on you at any time. Dirt, plants. So, um, my go-to stuff for this for for this type of job now is basically my least favorite workout gear. Correct. <laughs> That's what I wear. It's the running shorts that I don't actually like to go run in, and it's like the socks that are really like grody and brown, mm-hmm. and it's like a t-shirt that is okay if it gets paint all over it, but. The more and more I'm doing this and the more that that you know that I, I have to, to to put on stuff to go do all this, it's got me thinking like, why do I need to look like trash to do this? <laughs> because right? like you'll it, likely end if, up looking like trash at the end of the process. Yeah. So okay, but so it's this this has me starting to to to, you know, look at like the guys, the pros that come around to, to do some work yeah. if you need them to. Installing electrical stuff, doing some painting jobs, scraping a ceiling of popcorn, all that type of stuff. Always in like Carhartts, Dickies, pants, jumpsuits. Mm-hmm. Like they are, they are ready to work. Long sleeves. The guy that built the, the that built our fence over the summer mm-hmm. took him five days, hundred degrees every single day. He was in long sleeves and pants and, and hard steel toed boots every single day. Oh. You know. And so I'm wondering, like, like, do I need to, as I become more and more involved in this stuff, do I just need to level up my game and go full contractor here? You should. Go get you that Dickies jumpsuit. <laughs> <laughs> at, the, I, at the very least, some true, true, you know, like go to work pants. That so this is how you vintage up a pair of Carhartts. Are you doing yard work? Also cutting the yard? Are you doing? The I'm yard? not cutting the the grass. Oh, okay. no, no. Well, when I worked in high school, we had always worked the summers for this property management company, and it was a total grind. He owned trailer parks, mm-hmm. he owned all kinds of stuff, fields that we'd have to go mow. And is no matter how hot it was, you were you have to have pants on because you're going to end up on the ground on your knees doing something, sitting yep. down, moving. Yes. So I think the pants are a must. And I went Wrangler all the way through. Okay, Wrangler jeans. Wrangler jeans. Yeah, bleached. Bleach wash. Bleach wash. Yeah. Uh, nine three nine three six GBH. Whatever. That's, I, that's the cut. I never wore boots though. 
I think that uh, an old pair of tennis shoes is fun. Yeah, it's so easier to get around. I, I had so uh, obviously like the Solomon S Lab stuff. Yeah. very very trendy, very fashionable now. But I actually had a pair of Solomon Trail Runners, um, way prior to the to the craze to the to the them being a style darling. Um, I had them in college, and they were kind of all black. You know, good chunky hard wearing shoes. And th- these were my go-to, and I felt really good about these because they, they obviously looked kind of cool, but they were a great color for this type of stuff. And then uh, – and but these Solomons, you know, they, they're not laced. They, they're like the little cord that you pull and then tighten. Well, Sonny chewed through the cord on one of those shoes, so there's there's no replacing that, and they were uh, they were ruined. So now I'm in old running shoes. Yeah. And this – again, I don't like this. This is the wrong pair of shoes for what I'm doing. <laughs> They're too flexy. They're too. They're too soft. They're too cushioned, or whatever. For those pavers, if you drop a paver on those, on things. that, yeah, I'm, 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 you know, next, next stop, ER. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm. Now I don't want to spend like I don't want to go spend 175 bucks on a pair, of, another pair of Solomon's. Like those previous ones were perfect because they were 10 years old. They had been kind of beaten and worn. You know what I mean? What about some hiking boots that you could use also? Yeah, for a big hike. I know you're a big hiker. I love to hike. <laughs> <laughs> People call me uh, the alpinist. Uh huh. Yeah, because because uh, of my my hiking hobby. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm just are, are you? So you're saying you're you're in like old running shoes? That's yeah. your yeah. yeah yeah yeah. I don't have a yard to cut, but I would still wear old running shoes when I went like in Houston. I cut the yard, running shoes, jeans. Um, but now I, I still wear shorts just because I'm ill-prepared and don't know what I'm doing. So the la- one of the last times I was at Full Circle, the vintage store that we've mentioned many times uh, on the podcast, they have some Carhartt shorts. What do those look like? Like Carhartts, but shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would go with the pants. <laughs> Um, and I like, like they didn't have any of the pants in my size, but the shorts were my size. I didn't try them on. I should have. But I thought about them. I thought about them. That would look a little. Uh, they don't, don't have know. double knees because <laughs> obviously there are but no. But they're ne- probably there are no, there are no really knees. long. Are they really long? No, they didn't seem that long. That's what that's what what had me what had me going on them. They were kind of like a five pocket, canvasy denim looking short, but not denim. I just I'm picturing you in like the YMCA band. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. I bet they're like a little tight. I don't you know. Got do your little you, boots do, on. Like, do you think am I am I about to graduate to like some Duluth Trading Co. Yeah. stuff? Is yeah. that is this is this what I'm what I'm what I'm headed towards basically to to be doing my work? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yes, that's perfect. Look at this. There's me, there uh, we're on Duluth Trading Co.'s website here uh, in studio, and I I'm loving the the three main categories here. It's men's, women's, and then Alaskan hard gear. <laughs> and I, you know, like. Go all the way to the Alaskan, to Alaskan hard, hard gear. gear. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Powerade drinking, paver carrying man now. And, Look and at him. Alaskan Damn. hard gear is, is, I think, maybe what I need. Uh, I really enjoy the Duluth commercials. Yeah, do you? Yeah. Uh, but uh, so I don't know. This is, this is a, this is a, this is a work in progress here. But I just, I, you know, there's, I, I guess that because we get to to actually dress up so little, you know, we're not going to the office, we're not going to anything, you, you know, the spiel. Mm-hmm. It's like, and this is what I'm getting dressed for now. I just feel worse than ever about looking like a total scrub in the clothes that I hate the most that I own. You gotta get rid of those then, you know. But but I don't. But you don't want to like, you don't want to put on like your nice, expensive Lulu shorts for this. Right. See, that's what I'm doing, and it's a it's a mistake. But that's why I run through them so man, so much. Yeah, it is a mistake. But that's all I have, Barrett. I don't have any jeans that I'm going to wear out there. I don't need to have them on. Yeah, and I'm 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 half joking about going with the pants. It just gets too. No, I wouldn't. I'd get the pants if I was getting down. Yeah. Down in it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just potting plants, man. That's the most we we do. Yeah, the running shoes are probably okay for your for the yeah. for the gardening. <laughs> I'm just a gardener. <laughs> but um, there's some good gardening clothes out there. Yeah, maybe I'll get into some of that. 
There's some. I think there's some cl- some brands that are basically doing like gardening clothes. Really? Yeah. The, uh, there's one that they have like built-in it, knee pads. That's something you don't think about. The, well, the, that's the, what the double knees are for, right? Well, I'm talking about the knee pad that you throw down on the ground and kneel on. They, they mm. sell at the garden centers. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Those, yes. I would like one. Yeah, like this type of stuff. Ah. It's like very Japanese looking. Look at this. Look at this. See, I've been wanting to get into bonsai. Look, it's kind of like it's got this kimono look, right? It's the co- the Suwaki Kojima work jacket. Get that. You tell me you don't need this for gardening? No, I do need it. Oh boy. Huh. Limited edition, twelve ounce in- indigo selvage. Would you look at that? Tell me more. What's the size over there? Mediums all they have. Extra small. They got an extra small. Order it for me. Two hundred sixty nine. Look, but you can't put a price on. Look, it's look good, feel good. Yeah. You want your plants to respect you. <laughs> you hey, gotta, you did gotta... you buy the uh, the chore jacket from Malfrey? Because that would suffice. It would. I did not. Mm, good. I'll I, go I got. Buy it. I... <laughs> it's got to be on it. It does. Yeah, we're work for either of us. It. It. I liked it a lot. I started looking, I started, I asked the girl at Montfrey the kind of this for any type of backstory about it. Where do they get these things? Are they actually from France? Like blah, blah, blah. She said the owners would know that would know all that information. And like that maybe if she like looked it up in their system, it would have some notes about, about the, the piece. But anyway, I, I, I just like Googled for like vintage French chore coats. And these things are all over the place. Mm. Like they're, they were, they were uniforms basically. Yeah. Uh, in France for various jobs and and working facilities or what have you. Uh, and so they're all over the place and they range anywhere in price from like 50 to 150 bucks. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that I, I, I know that I'm being upcharged and that's okay because I want to support the local business, but I just had to, I don't know, I had to think about it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 225 was a little, it just felt a little much. Now the Japanese stuff they have in there, which is more expensive? Yes, I think would be very hard to find. That is, I totally agree. Do they still have them in there? They still have some stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I definitely, I thought about it, but this is, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I, I'm now in a month where I'm trying to, trying to pull back, trying to. Mm-hmm. It's this short month. If I can't do it this month, when will I? When can I do it? Try, so I'm trying to I'm pulling for you, man. Trying to restrain myself. Um, I'm sure that that will, that thing will sell quickly because that I tried on a couple of them and that one was a really nice fitting one. I thought that the, those Japanese coats that they have in there have been in there for they quite have. some time. Yeah. The, here's the only problem I have with those is the sleeve length. The the awkward sl- sleeve yes. length. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. to do with that. Yeah. I have these little baby wrists. <laughs> and you want some coverage on those I'm, wrists? <laughs> it just accentuates them when that's the only thing showing. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so we'll 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 see. We are we're chatting about. I I posted a picture of that jacket in the Discord. Um, and while we're here, I, but actually before I get to Discord, I just wanted to say one more thing about this stuff. I do actually wear a lot of my Outdoor Voices stuff for yeah. for this type of thing. Mm-hmm. Whether it's like the old cloud knit tees or like the running shorts or or even Sunday shorts. I've done plenty of this stuff in in the Sunday shorts. Yeah, good. The stuff has held up incredibly well. To, to to everything that I just laid out. It washes really easily. It always cleans up nice. It stays it stays nice from what you don't have to hang dry. It's a wash and a dry. Um and so I just wanted to uh, I just wanted to give them give them a little love because the stuff has been has held up to to kind of getting put through the ringer on on doing actual work. Where I'd noticed that we're both in in OV sweats today actually, so Shout out Ovi. Shouts to Ovi. They were profitable last quarter. Oh, really? Yeah. So is Ty still around? I believe so, but in a very limited capacity. Very. She doesn't post anything about it. No. You wouldn't know. And she, I think she's just on the board, basically. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. somebody told me she's still CEO. She'd come back. I don't think so. Yeah. I think she and Jeff Bezos are switching places. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Bezos, yeah, Bezos. Big news. Um, let's let uh, quickly the Discord. That is where if you you would know about this short code if you were in the Discord. The Discord is now exclusive to our patrons. It has officially happened. There's been some changes uh, over on Patreon. If you join the cool kids 
our longstanding tier for $2 a month, you will now get access to the Discord if you're not already in there. Um, that's how you get access. You're also going to get our, our monthly editorial. Again, something that we've been putting out. That's our best shit on the internet list, our best stuff of the month. It will now, going forward, it will always have a price threshold on it. So in our Cool Kids tier, $2 a month, you get access, access to the Discord and you'll get that list. Sometimes it'll be 50 bucks. Sometimes it'll be 100. Maybe it'll be 20. Maybe it'll be 125. But we'll always keep it at a relatively affordable threshold. Now our new tier, it's the Extremely Cool Kids. Five bucks a month. You're going to get all the stuff that I just mentioned. Plus, you're going to get another editorial, which will be a little bit more fanciful. It'll be just not... not The stuff that we put on, on our usual editorial, 100% stuff we vouch for, or we own, or we just bought, or we're thinking about buying, or we're imminently buying, or, or you know, it's it's very much like like very personal and very, very, uh, very true to stuff that we're recommending. The new editorial, the wish list, it, it will be no price threshold. It will be stuff that I'm just kind of like, I have in a cart, I have in a wish list, or that is like fitting a certain trend or fits a certain look that I want to, that I want, that I'm, you know, mm-hmm. kind of just scatterbrained with. It'll just be a little bit more all over the place, a little bit more expensive, a little bit more random, and a little bit more uh, just kind of like all things go. Here's just what I'm kind of like. Here's what we're kind of eyeballing, scoping out, stalking, if you will. Um, and then you are you will also get more audio content in this new podcast. I am going to be delivering a small, short format, solo pod, 10 to 30 minutes long. You'll get at least two a month, maybe sometimes three. And it'll just be stuff that we didn't have time to cover on, on this podcast, stuff that pops up later in the week, uh, just kind of stuff that I'm that I'm burning on, or completely random random topics that don't really warrant like full scale discussions uh, with Phil here or a guest on the pod, um, and uh, and that that'll be an, an added benefit for for that five dollar tier. So go check it out, patreoncom slash Uh You can read. Basically everything that I just said, uh, looking into the two tiers, and uh, it's it's uh, it's a great way to support the podcast. Also, go check out Bespoke Post, of course. Um, but uh, you know, if you're already signed up with them or, or you decide that you don't need it, this is uh, another excellent way to uh, to keep us going here. Patreon.com/slash/clubcool. We thank everybody that has that has been a patron and that is in the Discord and is helping to to continue to build the community. And we'd love to to have more of you join. Um, Okay, Phil, uh, I think it is time to talk about this John Elliott shoe program. You've been checking this stuff out? Yeah. <clears throat> the Chelsea boot. Mm-hmm. They released a photo of this today. Oh, wait. No, I haven't seen that. No, you've not seen it? No. Pull it up. Get it loaded up here. Okay, here we go. So, John Elliott. Oh, okay. Yeah. A while back, a few years ago now at this point, had their own shoe line. They did some sneakers. They did a couple of boots. And then for whatever reason, they dropped they dropped in-house footwear from their line. And they, they, they seemed to be focusing on the Nike collabs. They did the LeBron kind of spinoff icons that came in a few colors. They did a Nike Vandal. And they've even carried some, like, some random Nikes on their site. Like uh, they had some women's blazers on there. They've carried... Uh, I think some just like some mainline uh, vandals from Nike as well. Anyways, uh, it's 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 now become apparent that they basically wanted to redo that footwear program. They've been they've been in the lab, as it were, in Italy cooking up this new batch, and it is finally releasing. There are three styles to start this off. There is a, a lace up boot called the Speed Lace, which is very clearly informed by the Jordan Ten. Um, also looks like it took some inspiration from stuff like police boots. There is a monochromatic all white runner with a Vibram sole. And then this is the, the Chelsea, the Caldera Chelsea, which is very much in line with kind of a footwear trend that we've spoken to, which is like, you know, what we kind of refer to as the stompers, big, heavy boots, chunky sole, um two tabs t- yeah two tabs like very <clears throat> far more hard wearing than the previous chelsea iteration which is more like your common projects saint laurent like sleek slim profile 
leather heel like or, or crepe sole uh, type stuff. You know, these just fit in more with the with the baggier silhouettes and like the very outdoor kind of hiking forward looks, cargo pants, flannels, like the whole shebang. Um, and I just wanted to get your thoughts. These the 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 speed lace boots have released in in both the suede here and the uh, and the black already. And then I believe on Friday we're getting the runner and the black leather Chelsea. Uh, the more I look at those sneakers, um, the runner, I really like them. I really like them. I actually, I, I feel like this shoe is very you. Yeah. It, I, I can, just cause I wear so much black Yep. and just neutrals, I think it would work. But what are these going to be? 375, 350, 400? My, my guess is actually probably closer to 500. <laughs> <laughs> no. See, yeah. I'm out. I'm out. Uh, just that's that's based on made in Italy. Made in Italy. Yeah, they've been developing this for like well over a year now. Yeah, they're doing. They're, they've already started. You you always know that something is going to be pricey from a brand when they spend weeks or months in advance telling you the story uh-huh. about it. <laughs> yeah, they got to sell you on it before they. They're put selling the price you on out. it. They're 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 sowing the seeds. Um. So they they've already talked about like how this like the, there's some type of technology with like the mesh paneling or whatever and like <laughs> you know it's it's what's the technology it, I don't know it's like and then it's like carbonara suede or whatever and like obviously they've got this this Vibram sole which is 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 not unique to to their footwear of course but look at this guy in the comments I can't find them on your site <laughs> the comments on Instagram on just all of Instagram it it's it's maddening. People yeah. in comments are the biggest idiots in the world, basically. Um, yeah. Uh. Yeah, so anyway, they, they've kind of been pitching these for a while. The boots came in and were, I want to say the boots, the, the speed lace-up boots were five ninety eight. dollars Now, that's... that's it's a lot you know, of material. It's a lot, it's a lot of material. Boots are typically more expensive than sneakers. Um, they're not... Th- this is like a different, you know... Vibram soles, you can go to your, to your, you got a pair of Goodyear or, or other type of welted boot. You can take them to your shoe hospital, swap them out and get a Vibram sole put on there. You know, so their, their Vibram sole is, is, is accessible. They, they're not like a, any type of custom sole. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This, the one that they use for the boots, I think is a little bit more, it was probably more expensive and harder to get. Um, and maybe had a higher, uh, minimum mm-hmm, as well, mm-hmm. basically. But, you know, we know where John Elliott is, like, pricing stuff and, and where they're kind of sliding into the market. And so a com- a, what common projects are at, like, 428 now retail. And and this is a, a an even more, like, boutique brand, right? It's, like, new to, like, re-releasing footwear. It just feels like they're going to be in the, the mid-400s at the – lowest and they'll go quick and i think they will go quick yes because people seem to be very hyped up on this mm-hmm. now y'all know me i'm not a white i'm not a white shoe guy i do not wear all white sneakers so this does nothing for me but <laughs> and <laughs> but they i i appreciate i think they look cool i, I just wouldn't wear them the I, if, if they did like a gray uh, a, a grayed out version of these now we're talking which he probably will. Which they probably will, or or even like maybe like an oatmeal or kind of tan colorway. I could totally. I could really get behind. But just as as we've talked about, you know, your kind of quest for like your your real estate uniform, which is like a lot of black, a lot of clean, minimal, straight lines, good jeans, good sweaters. I feel I just felt like these would would really fit that. They bill. do, and like I, I just am so anti loafer mm-hmm. that I just have to have something that's more toned down and more. Not as dressy. Yeah. Not as, uh, yeah. You don't want to put on airs. I don't want to put on airs. <laughs> um, the boot is, uh, the, the speed lace up, I want to like it more than I like it. Yeah, right. Right. Like it looks good in these styled photographs. It looks cool sitting on the desert sand or whatever. But but there are some photos already of people out there wearing them. And they've got like this, they, they really like pancake at the toe. Like they feel very flat and mm-hmm. long and wide at the toe. What was that Yeezy um, boot that was suede? Remember those? <clears throat> Same colorway. Mm, vaguely. 
All right, I'll, I'll find it. Go yes, ahead. Sir. See if anybody's posting these up on the Grom yet. No, I'm not seeing it. I'll pull up a photo. But um, And then the Chelsea, the Chelsea's okay, but it um, last year, John Elliott was styling a lot of product shots and, and, and uh, model shots with the, the Prada Brixen boot. And it just, like, it, it's almost like they kind of, they gave they gave up the gig, right? Like they, like I very clearly know what they were inspired by because they they styled with these all of last year. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just like I, I've I've seen behind the curtain. I know exactly what you were pulling from already. Barrett's got you. So uh, that I think that's that's just kind of one of the. Like it's fine, but it's just like I know what the original is here. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even, and it's, I'm not even really guessing. Um, again, I'd like a suede in this, I think. Just because in the we, Chelsea. In the Chelsea. Yes. Just because I've seen, beca- again, we've seen the black leather a lot. We've seen right. the Prada. We've seen uh, Common Projects do a Lug Soul Chelsea. We've, there's, there's, there's Doc Martens. There's a Do. There's just a bunch of brands that have already, there's, Jill, you know, Jill Sander does these. like The rubber ones, too. Oh, the, the Bottega Veneta yeah. ones. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I and and I feel like, you know, you kind of take the suede from the Common Project or from the Saint Laurent and you add it to this like very chunky silhouette. And now I think you're kind of cooking with gas and doing something different. But um They gotta get you on that design team. Well, you know, we're 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 long we're long fans of the brand. So when they when they when they release new programs like this, I I feel compelled to weigh in. Maybe we'll get somebody from John Elliott on the pod, podcast one day. You never know. See why not? Yeah. This is far off, but I, I mean, ignore the the sole, but it's got that same speed lace. Mm, yes. The seven fifty. Yes. Yeah, the seven fifty. Easy boost seven fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're it's not got wrong. The same lace. Very similar system, lacing concept. But then yep. they have that strap across the front. It's suede. See, like when these first came out, I was into them. Oh yeah. Right. Who wasn't? That was that was peak easy. Peak easy. Those were I saw these hot, in, hot fire. in Soho one time on some douche, <laughs> and it kind of killed it for me. But these, I loved these. Yes, yes. The, the tan. The tan, gum sole, yeah. Yeezy 750. Man, I, I, I still like those. I don't know what you'd wear them with, but they're cool. Um, did, you see, did you see Bieber out wearing the Nike Yeezys just recently? No. Let's see if I can. Which ones? Um, like the, like the, the, the gray, Volt, uh, okay. pink. Huh strapped nike yeezys um damn where did i see this see these still go for 950 in a size eight that was i mean you start talking about the the 750 and that that was that was when i was really starting to get into the whole sneaker craze yeah, yeah. thing me too that was like you did, how, that was on adidas.com mm-hmm. desperately trying to get through <laughs> and we didn't Remember really, that? and we didn't really understand like the extent of like bots at that point yeah, you know what i mean you have it on the desktop and the phone yes nothing worked yeah that was fun though i enjoyed that that rush it, getting, yes getting the l absolutely absolutely um but that jacket Bieber was in that i sent to you you already knew about him I did. So we're we're gonna talk when we we're, we'll do we'll do spring trends okay. next next week. I we'll think we'll save that. And I want to talk about that brand then. It's Ooh, man. not not to bury the lead, but it's it's ERL mm-hmm. and this this kit that he was wearing with the Nike Yeezys. He's wearing one of the ERL hoodies. Um, mm-hmm. I can't. It was on like it was in my explore page, and now I can't find it. Uh, but okay. it popped up. It wasn't like an account that I was following, and now I can't find it. But We'll bring it up next week. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can find. I just wanted to pull up one of these. Yeah. Here. Look, like, see this, see the, t- see the toe of this yeah. boot. Yeah. <laughs> but you, we talked about this. Looking like down a, at the shoe, it's like it's too it's tough. It's Ooh. too long or Go something. Go back. This dude. Now this is this is uh, well, I don't want to. I don't want to blow up blow up anybody's spot here. Okay. That that right there, you can see it right there in that mm-hmm. one too, though. Yeah. So I I don't know. I'm looking forward to to seeing what they continue to to put out with this shoe program though, because the first I liked the first run. Um. So 
more on that. We'll we'll keep we'll keep in touch with what they're doing, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing if they do come out with any other colors of the runner or the Chelsea. Yeah, and I'm I'm excited to see what the price is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, my guess is four ninety eight. Four forty eight wouldn't surprise me. Any lower than that, there's no way. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Last topic today. You and I, we were out at Family Business Brewery on uh, on Dripping Springs with our friends Jordan and Katie, and we got to we got into a really uh, for me it was a very fun conversation because uh, when I was at Montfrey r- r- last week, I popped into other stores on South Congress there that we that we like to to check check in with um, by George and Stag, and my, my experiences were just like. And my experiences overall at those two stores now are so different. They've become so different, and it's really, really crazy. And like everybody is shopping more online now, especially in the pandemic. And I don't think in store experiences are going away, but what they bring to you is like more important than ever. Mm-hmm. Because I'm already not inclined to shop in store with you because of all of the perks of shopping online right. these days. Mm-hmm. And so if you don't make it a good experience, then I'm just like, you give me zero reason to ever come back. <laughs> and <laughs> after this little walk, this South Congress walkthrough, I don't know if I'm ever going to pop into the South Congress by George again. Yeah, It was a terrible experience. Uh-huh. And uh, it was cold. It was sterile and not warm. And I felt... Like I was being followed around as if I was going to steal something. Oh, and we do know that you like to steal. <laughs> um, it was just really, really weird, and I don't know how I I don't know how they're getting away with that because they 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 follow they also they completely ignore e commerce. Mm-hmm. They do not follow any type of normal sale season. So like the stuff on the the stuff in the store almost always can be had at better prices. By not buying from them, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> um, and it's just, it's just, I don't know. The whole thing is weird. I don't know how they're, I don't know how that store is making any money. And like, you know, I get the fact that that South Congress has become very much a, t- a tourist destination, and that they probably get so much foot traffic even during the pandemic, as as things have opened up a little bit more, that they are so tired of people coming in there. Looking at the tag on two pieces of clothing and being like, "Oh shit, this is this is an expensive store," and then like not buying anything and walking out. Mm-hmm. So it's like unless, that you, but you get the feeling that unless they know that you are there to spend money, they could give a. They shit. could just give two shits. Yeah, and I get, I get the, I get the opposite of that feeling at Stag and Montfrey and Montfrey, uh, Montfrey. Yes, that's a hell of an experience. Um, I, you know, the last time I was in, I've, so Stag South Congress was like, you know, kind kind of slow. So I, I didn't totally get the 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 vibe that I usually get. Um, but I was at the Domain one recently, and like, you know, I I was greeted warmly, got a compliment on my hat, like, uh, you know, the guys just wanted to shoot the shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then when I walked out, like, you know, I tried on like a $600 double RL shirt and then walked out with a stick of deodorant, <laughs> right? And I, I felt no, I did not feel bad. They did not, there's no vibe that that's like wrong right. or bad for them. Right. And so I just, it's so nice to like, to have this curated experience where it's almost like they acknowledge that it's an expensive store and they want Whatever whatever it is that you come in there to do, if you just pick up a throw pillow and then walk out, or you only buy a deodorant or a bandana for 30 bucks, or like whatever, it's just like, as long as the experience is good, when you're ready to come back and spend $200 on a shirt or however much mm-hmm. on a sweater, it's like, you're going to remember that you had a good experience there, that everybody was nice and that they wanted you to be there, and you will go back there and su- support the store. Mm-hmm. And it's just like the polar opposite from Buy George, where it's like, I'm so disinclined to give them any money at this point. Right. And I just don't, you have to think, since you and I both have the same um, opinion of the shopping experience there. Yeah. More so the South Congress. Lamar isn't like this incredible experience by any means. It's, but it's, yeah. But it's, it's totally not good. And yeah. And it's totally different. Um, you know, we don't have to get into the to the, to the granular details of, of what makes the two different stores tick. But but the South Congress store is more of like your, 
the the that Lamar store exists very much in a vacuum. It's got its clientele. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 less. Uh, I, I you, you definitely get the indifference when you're in there, but you don't get the like. Why the hell are you here? Why the hell are you here? Yes, that's yes. the whole thing. Is why are you here? It's it's at at the Lamar store. It's more like oh yes, please. Uh, you look like you're gonna be like a, a museum patron here. Mm-hmm. You just go around and look at the pretty things, and that's fine. At the South Congress store, it's like they'd rather not spend the time with you at all. Yeah, they like, they can. It's very clear that they are going to. Sh- they're going to stereotype you from the moment you ring the little doorbell to get in. Yes, <laughs> and if if you don't have on what that what they think you should have on, as in uh, s- some sort of products that they already care, some sort of designer stuff, and some heavy jewelry, also a white woman, <laughs> <laughs> then they could care less. Yeah, because that's who they're catering. The to. the key there is like a three thousand dollar handbag, I think, or, or anything that screams. At you, yeah, it has to scream at you. Yes, but 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 by George, very much known for uh, it's like the place in Austin where you can get Celine handbags. Yeah, and I feel like that's the that's the key that maybe unlocks um, <laughs> getting treated well inside of the store. And like I could care less. Who gives a fuck about a Celine handbag? And yeah. like, and, and the thing that I just I don't give a shit one way or another because I'm going to go in there and if I see something, then if it's priced right, we'll buy it. But the I wish they would just snap out of it, the people that work there, and and snap out of the 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 mindset that you are in any way, shape, or form better than any of the patrons that walk through that door. Yeah, because you and I both know, as a by George former employee, mm-hmm. they're not the, they wouldn't be going in there shopping, buying a bunch of threads if they didn't work there. No, and absolutely some sort not. Of discount, right? No. So no. snap out of it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and. They have a, a a cool selection. It's it's well curated, I guess. But like, I can't tell you the last time I went into the men's section at both stores and found anything where I was like, "Ooh, yeah, whoa, what is this?" I mean, seriously. Yep. Maybe a pair of shoes a, a while back. Mm-hmm. I mean, the stuff. The only thing that 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 grabs my attention is the cashmere from um, Elder Statesman. Elder Statesman. Yeah, because yeah. that's. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I don't care. Yeah, and and I mean they they definitely like we're talking about just uh, their focus is definitely more on women, and they have they do have cool women stuff, and and they do carry some small, uh, more local brands, and it's like and and by George is the one place like that is where if I want to see something from John Elliott in person before I buy it, my buy it, my only chance here in Austin is is at by George. Mm-hmm. And so it just it's and and I know that other stores in other cities like I just hear anecdotally from from people online or people on Style Forum or people in the Discord or, or friends that like or, or even you know when we were used to be able to go go around other places and visit other shops that it doesn't have to be like this. It does not have to be this no. like cold bad experience just because you carry luxury product. Yeah, and Stag kind of proves that to me. I think, um, and even though it like e- even though its overall vibe is a little bit more. Te- Texan and Western and California and like generally more laid back, right? Mm-hmm. So it maybe lends itself to that. It's just all of these stores, if they make it through the pandemic, have to remember that people are, will be more accustomed to buying online than ever now. Yeah. Even people that were that still loved in-store experience and hated online shopping like have probably had to learn the ropes of online shopping now. And it, you just, you, you got to... You got to treat people right, and you you you, you got to make that experience worthwhile, because that that liter- that that sense of goodwill is literally why I would buy in store. That's why I'm always I like I like going into Stag. That's what I was gonna say, and yeah. I hope that they stick around. Yeah. Therefore, I will make an effort to spend a little bit of money with them. When Anytime I walk by Stag, I'm like, let's pop in. Yeah. If I go by by George, I really have to be talked yes, into it. Totally. Totally. You have to gear yourself up yeah, for that. Like we're gonna go in here and look at the same shit. <laughs> and I, you you have to think that their inbox is full of complaints and they just don't give a shit. I mean, it's just that's just what it is. They don't care. Part of it, and this was I, I thought that this was better under the new regime, although the two people that that I was close with that worked there or, or had experience with 
with the former regime, which is is who who I worked for, and then also worked for the new regime, new management um, are both. I think they're both gone now. Um, but uh, it's always been a place where like senior employees were very entitled, mm-hmm. and and that type of seniority, like was worth a lot basically and that is that that's an issue um one of the people that works at the south congress store has worked there for years and i think is just kind of like you know a j a kind of a jaded b at this point yeah <laughs> and that's an that's a problem like you know yeah if you're tired of being in in customer service in in customer facing retail then don't and do, can't it. do it then anymore then don't do it right yeah totally so, but yeah, Mall Frey again, though, like that is such a great experience. Not that you're going to go in there and break the bank, you could, but they are everybody in there is so nice, so welcoming. They've got drinks for you if you want one, mm-hmm. they're hands on or hands off. Um, I don't know, I think they've done a really excellent job all the way around. They also, just one more quick note on, on Mall Frey before we get out of here. They are slanging some hats, man. Oh yeah, I I've, kill it. I've been in there now three times. Yeah, in like recent months, basically over the past six months, once to get the hat, once to reshape it, and then a third time to get more reshaping done. Right, uh, and every single time there are multiple people buying custom hats there at the counter. Yes, I've never been in there where so it wasn't like that. I would love to know how many custom hats they're doing a day. Because yeah. I, be, it's got to be like fifty on a Saturday, and that's during a pandemic. Yes. <laughs> Think about when it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they are they are ready to really run when this thing opens back up. I think. Good for them. Yeah, that's a great store. Yes, um, got crystals too. If you need, they do have crystals. Let's get your chakra. I need to I need to figure out who the owner is there so that next time ta- next time, I can just be like I can just be like, hey, you should come on the podcast. I, I've met him. They own Allen Boots. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's a husband and wife team. They're great. They are the owners of Allen's? His dad is. Okay. His family. Gotcha. All right. So, yeah, that was it for the for our final segment. Just a, a note to to all the stores out there. And, and um, you know, I, it, <laughs> it, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to – it just really made me excited to go experience other stores that are doing it right, basically. Yeah. Sid uh, Mashburn also does it right. Yeah. Sid Mashburn has a great in Atlanta staff. The one I went to was in Dallas. Okay, okay, it was very cool. Yeah, um, but ju- but just yeah, yeah, excited to get back out there and, and support stores that are are um, you know kind of nailing the experience and you have to stop have supporting to. stores that that aren't. Um, again, thank you to our sponsor Bespoke Post today. Once again, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash club cool, where there are, is a new updated tier. Go learn all about what you can get joining either one of our two tiers. You can follow us on Instagram at Club Cool Pod. And hey, do not forget, um, there are there are several hotline calls sitting in the bank right now. Uh, but I'd like to feel, I'd like to hear a few more before we before we do another one. So get those calls in. The number is 833-258-2266 or 833-CLUB-COO if you're a real one. And um, that'll wrap it up for today. We will be back next week. Uh, thanks for everybody for listening, and we'll see you soon. Later. <laughs>